world, I'm Dan Brown, and we need to stop everything that we're doing and talk for a minute about how Jar Jar Binks is a Sith Lord. I follow the Star Wars subreddit, and about a week ago I noticed a post titled, Jar Jar Binks was a trained Force user, knowing Sith collaborator, and will play a central role in The Force Awakens. And at first I thought to myself, ha ha, funny joke, I barely skimmed the whole thing and you know, moved on with my life. Over the intervening week, that post has become one of the top 25 Reddit submissions of all time. So last Last night, I went back, read through it thoroughly, and I gotta tell you guys, this rabbit hole is so deep. There is so much evidence. I am a believer, and I'm going to turn you guys into believers too. Username Celestial Ronin has done a ton of digging on this and clues us in that things were a little bit off with Jar Jar from the very beginning. There's animals for miles running away from these tanks. Jar Jar Binks is walking towards them, standing there waiting for the arrival of Qui-Gon Jinn. Basically, as agile as Jar Jar Binks had been, blocks Qui-Gon Jinn's path and they both tumble to the ground. What exactly is this Jar Jar agility he's referring to? This is something uh, that is thoroughly established in the original Reddit post. I'm just gonna go uh, point by point here. All credit uh, should go to Reddit username Lumpawuru. Jedi are largely based off of Shaolin monks. Warriors in the Star Wars universe have always drawn heavily from real world martial arts disciplines. And there's a particular discipline of martial arts that matches Jar Jar Binks to a T. It's called Zui Quan, I think. I think I'm saying that right, or drunken boxing. It's a fighting style designed to lull one's opposition into a false sense of security by a appearing to be clumsy and uncoordinated, but using your apparent lurching and falling to kick some serious ass. The original post provides some side-by-side -side comparisons. Here we see Binks sloshing. Here we see Binks kipping up. Here we see Binks centering himself. These are all very precise and zen techniques for someone who fronts as being so clumsy. Jar Jar's apparent mastery of drunken fist is a metaphor for his role in the plot at large. Maybe Jar Jar Jar's true nature isn't annoying and inept. Maybe it's all an act to mislead not only Obi-Wan and Qui-Gon, but the audience as well. Now, things start to get really juicy when Jar Jar's apparent use of the Force is pointed out to you. This is something that only Jedi and Sith pretty much should be able to tap into. Most of it is subtle, well hidden, and frankly, creepy when you see it. I had goosebumps when I saw some of this. But one of the first things you see Jar Jar do is this gravity-defying display of acrobatics. I mean, that has to be a force-assisted jump, right? And that's not his only force-assisted jump in The Phantom Menace, though this next one is much harder to pick up on. In this scene right here, pay attention to Jar Jar. He's dangling from the right side of the balcony, then the camera angle changes, and Jar Jar falls from what would be the left side. Okay, it's easy to write this one off as a simple continuity error, a movie mistake. That is, until you notice where this second droid is looking and shooting at. It's looking at Jar Jar's initial position to the right. Then we see Jar Jar fall to the left. Then it fires at Jar Jar's initial position to the right, only to immediately shift toward where he is now, to the left. All like, you know, how the hell did he get over there? The animators deliberately imply there that Binks made a force jump, and Jar Jar's use of the force is far from limited to the physical realm. Perhaps the most iconic use of the force in all of Star Wars so far uh, is Obi-Wan's psychological manipulation from the original trilogy. He's on the drone you're looking for these aren't the droids we're looking for he can go about his business you can go about your business move along move along move along there are moments when Jar Jar makes suggestions, coupled with not-so-subtle hand gestures to, among other things, receive a promotion in the military, receive a promotion in the Senate, convince the Senate to suspend democracy and grant Palpatine emergency powers. And it's not just hand gestures. At times, Binks appears to literally be putting words in other characters' mouths. The Queen wishes it. She's curious about the planet. Well, I don't approve. Well, I don't approve. 
Credit to YouTube username Motsi for those observations, and the top comment on Motsi's upload points out, Jar Jar is a CG rendered character, so every single motion he makes is deliberate. The animators intentionally directed his every gesture, his every turn of head, his movement of lips. This is very different from an actor who just happens to look at an odd direction or make a strange posture. This was the moment for me when I pulled a Han Solo from the Episode 7 trailer. It's true. Binks and Palpatine are co-conspirators. They have to be. I mean, they're from the same planet. It's entirely plausible that they had a long-standing working relationship long before Jar Jar's first frame of screen time. Not to mention that the voice actor who played Jar Jar Binks responded to this theory by tweeting, It feels really good when the hidden meaning behind the work is seen, no matter how long it takes. Hashtag The Phantom Menace. <laughs> So if they're co-conspirators, what's the conspiracy? What exactly is their plan? Well, for this, I want to go back to Celestial Ronin's car vlog. After Padme, who is the real queen of my dog, is excused from meeting with R2-D2, starts cleaning him, Jar Jar Binks immediately introduces himself to her. After their planet side, if you believe the, quote, the, the whole force persuasion, he then arranges for Padme to go with them. Obi-Wan Kenobi receives a message from the governor of Naboo, who is in captivity with the Trade Federation. Immediately, Obi-Wan Kenobi senses, this is a trap. He tells Qui-Gon Jinn, Qui-Gon Jinn, same thing. It's a trick, send no communication. Both of them said it, no communication. As soon as that scene ended, we cut to Coruscant, or wherever Palpatine and Darth Maul were at the time, and suddenly they're like, oh yeah, they're on Tatooine. The Sith already know by that time, where they are, because Jar Jar had told them earlier. Darth Maul comes out of nowhere, fails to uh, kill Qui-Gon Jinn. Darth Maul was supposed to assassinate the Jedi, and then Jar Jar Binks would leave with Pap, um, Queen Amidala back to Coruscant. That was the intent. Darth Maul messed up that plan. As of now, believers are separated into two basic camps. First of all, there are those who say, holy shit, this was obviously George Lucas's intent, but he obviously chickened out in the face of the magnitude of the negative reaction to Jar Jar Binks, and we will never hear from the character again. Now, this is supported by some comments made by George Lucas in some interviews, where he basically said, blah, 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 we changed some characters and plot twists because of negative fan reaction, blah, blah, blah. Then there's the camp I belong to, if for no other reason reason than it being super fun, though we have some evidence. We don't think that Disney or J.J. Abrams just want to sweep the prequels under the rug and cash in. We think that they would rather try to redeem the prequels somewhat, and with them George Lucas's legacy, uh, retroactively. We already know, through some behind-the-scenes footage, that there will likely be Gungans in The Force Awakens, and we already know that Kylo Ren, the new face of the dark side and clear Darth Vader analog, is not at the top of the First Order's chain of command. Kylo Ren's boss is an as-of-yet mysterious character, Supreme Leader of the First Order, Snoke. It's his voice that we heard at the very beginning of the very first teaser trailer. There has been an awakening. Have you felt it? Vader is Dutch for father, as in Vader is Luke's father, the greatest twist in movie history. Snoke is Dutch for fish, not just fish, but pike, as in can you think of a character from the Star Wars universe who resembles a pike and might constitute a plot twist just as jarring as Vader's reveal? Oh, and what do you know? Snoke is to be played by Andy Serkis via motion capture. He's a CG character. You think maybe possibly it might just be a uh, old twisted dark side version of Misa Jar Jar. Uh. There's been an awakening. Again, these ideas are not my own. I am just compiling them in video form. All credit goes to Reddit username Lumpawaru and the ever-growing body of evidence um, accessible at reddit.com slash r slash Darth Jar Jar. Uh, there are links below to all that. Check it out. The rabbit hole is already very deep, and I, I assume people are going to keep digging and digging and digging uh, in the 41 days between now and the release of The Force Awakens. So uh, let me know what you think, and thank you for watching. <laughs>